Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, the third one of these that we've done so far. Of course, Basic Sickness doing the intro there at the top of the show. Go check them out at basicsickness.com. Of course, this is uh, one of the fine, fine products we do over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, and if you, of course, you can email us uh, any questions, anything else, anything you think we should have on the show at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And make sure to put the uh, subject line as Indie so we can separate it out for this version of the show. Or you can drop us a line at that hotline number at 412-206-WMS0. We're on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, of course, we're on Facebook, Google+. Plus. Just look for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, look us up on iTunes. We're on Stitcher now. We're on YouTube. All that kind of stuff. And we're spreading out. Just getting the ball rolling. And, of course, you can check out the Super Feed to get everything Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just look up Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on, again, Stitcher, iTunes, that kind of stuff. And you can join us here Tuesdays, 11 p.m. Eastern, live at SorgatronMedia.com. With me, as always, is my trusty sidekick in the indie world. He's an announcer down at Inspire Pro Wrestling. Eamon, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Sargatron. How are you doing? How are you doing? Awesome. We got a little bit of feedback there. We'll roll with that. Um, and, of course, our guest this week is somebody that we've had on the Wrestling Mayhem show before. Um, somebody familiar with that. He's uh, infamous for uh, um, giving giving our friend Chachi a shot to the balls for his birthday that we've discussed a while ago. Jock Sampson joins us from uh, the, the bowels of Appalachia. How are you doing tonight, sir? Well, dude, I'm doing pretty damn good. I just got done knocking the shit out of my wife. Uh, so, you know, when anytime I can beat my wife, you know, that's a good day. You know, I've actually got a ring rat in my, right here in my living room while I'm watching ESPN, you know, servicing my members. So, you know, I'm doing pretty damn good. Awesome. <laughs> the pluses of independent wrestling. I love it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Low moral standards is all I can say. That's why I like the rats. <laughs> Jock Sampson, I, I first, uh, again, I, I want to, uh, uh, you know, have people explain uh, who is Jock Sampson? Uh, what, you know, what, what do they expect if they're going to see uh, that name, Jock Sampson, on a cart? Well, let's just put it this way. You get to see Jock Sampson wrestle, you know, you're going to probably see the craziest, nuttiest bastard in the history of mankind. Because I'm usually, I come to the show drunk as hell. I've already had sex with 45 women. My wife was there, and, and she wasn't happy, but she didn't have to deal with it. <laughs> but I have a great time, and I like the fight. You ain't going to see Jock Sampson doing no damn triple Lindy's off the damn top rope. That's for damn sure, you know. That's pretty much, you should see Jock Sampson you know, you're gonna see somebody get their get their fucking ass kicked. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so, like I said, uh, for you know, we we're talking before the show. We like to kind of find out um, with 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 the guys that come on the show. Um, what got you into wrestling? Now, I imagine you it, it, were you inspired by a lot of um, like I, I feel like your style. It reminds me of old. You know, Tracy Smothers, you know, a lot of a lot of good old country boys you saw in pro wrestling uh, kind of growing up. Is that is that where you draw a lot of your inspiration from? Well, my inspiration is the character. It really ain't. It's not a character. You know, everyone says you got to get yourself character, you know, or whatnot. And that may be true. But the Jock Samson, Jock Samson, that's it. I am. I am what you get. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you come to. What I like about pro wrestling, you know, why I became a pro wrestler was when I was a kid, you know, and, and I was, I was, you know, my mother, uh, my parents were divorced. My father was a coal miner. Uh, and then me and my mother would bond quite a bit by watching, you know, uh, wrestling while I was growing up. And, and we were more of a WWF, 1980s. Mm hmm you know, family, because my mom had a was what was hot for Shawn Michaels and the Rockers. Had a big <laughs> poster on her wall, you know. And uh, we were real big. She took me to see wrestling, you know, up in Columbus, called Columbus, Ohio. There, uh, I can't remember the damn name of the building, but it was it, it was it wasn't Nationwide because Nationwide wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the Columbus Center or something, Ohio Center. That's what it was. And I still remember the main of you know. And WWE, I don't know if anyone remembers the old days, the main event of the show was always the first one before intermission. 
And then the second main event was the one that was been the last match, what a lot of people call the main event. And, and I remember getting to see uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you know, go against, try to get his crown back from the Macho King Randy Savage. <laughs> And I still remember this, 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 this super well, man, because, you know, being a little kid, I don't know, uh, you know, anybody that was like eight, nine, ten years old back in the late eighties, early nineties, that didn't think Hacksaw Jim Duggan was the shiznit. <laughs> you know, I had a little phone two by four shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was pretty excited. I, you know, and I, and that main, and, and the second main event was a funny story was the honky talk, not the honky talk man, sorry. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, uh, versus uh, the uh, the big boss man. And the reason I remember this well is if some fan threw a can of pop or a beer or whatever into the ring, probably about 60 feet. And, I mean, he threw the damn thing and hit the big boss man directly in the face. <laughs> And I still remember him taking down off the steps and pooping and hauling ass out downtown Columbus. And, uh, and I still remember him selling. And then all of a sudden, Dusty Rhodes came back right after that and just started firing up, giving the bionic elbow. And he, and he, you know, and he won the match and whatnot. But that, that's, uh, it was just a good time for me and my mother to, uh, to bond. But then, you know, my favorite wrestler was always Rowdy Roddy Piper because uh, my family heritage is Scottish. Oh, so nice. I've always been big on anything Scott. Even though Ric Flair's my favorite, Roddy Piper probably is the main reason I am what I am, why I like to cut promos and why I work the way I do is because, you know, I have a thing for being a Scott. Awesome. Awesome. So so were you um you know, were you WWF all the way through and through, like you know, you know, to you know, the day you started getting into it? Uh, yeah, believe it or not, yeah. Everyone's going to think, I was, and don't get me wrong, I watched all wrestling. Yeah. Because, you know, they were all, I, I kind of realized the styles were different and whatnot. Shit, I remember getting home from school, 4 o'clock, you know, I excited every day because I knew that I was going to see some Texas wrestling on there. You know, and then Saturday afternoon to 5.05 or 7.05, you'd see WCW or the NWA, you know, Saturday night. And I still remember uh, the varsity club. And, and even though I was a little kid, I, I, I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm a sports fanatic. Mm. Just, I, I would rather watch sports than watch wrestling now. Mm-hmm. And, and I've always, I'm a big Ohio State Buckeye fan, and I fucking despise the state of fucking Michigan. <laughs> I think... I'm on, you know, if you want to ask me a question later about that, but I hate those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have, I think I have a, uh, a friend of mine. We actually had him on earlier on the tech show on Awesome Cast. He actually does some, mm-hmm. uh, 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 he's a very, he's from Columbus originally, uh, goes out to all the games and tailgates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, I think I have a, a, a hangout show I can forward you after this you might be interested in. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I still remember the varsity club, and as soon as I saw uh, Rick Steiner come out, I was like, oh, fuck him. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, I just remember laughing. My, you know, I said that out loud. My mom threw something at me, hit me in the back of the head. I, <laughs> I, said, I was like, can you know, and I My love- cousin taught me how to swear, so after that, I was just ripping and roaring after that. And I keep forgetting that regional thing, because I know um- – uh, I can't remember if you worked up there, but you know, going up to Prime Wrestling and seeing like Sons of Michigan coming in and they're the heels, you know, uh, in Cleveland, right? Versus right. like here in Pittsburgh, we got guys like uh, Ray Rowe and J Rock will come in as a Cleveland Mafia and we'd be booing them until people start cheering for them because they were just too good, right? Um, you know, well, that that's that, that's always really I keep forgetting about the Michigan Ohio rivalry there and how and I love to see how that extends into wrestling like that. Well. You know, and I got a lot of good friends that live up there. You know, the Scarboni brothers, mm-hmm. uh, Gutter, Nate Madsen, all those guys. And they're good friends of mine. But when it comes to wrestling, and, and, and you really think, kind of the same people that watch professional wrestling are the same kind of guy that might drink beer and watch football. Yeah. 
you know, so there's a big translation lag, you know, you know, there really is. Like, people, and, and, and the thing is, with people hating in Ohio, they hate more than somebody who, uh, who, who hate, I mentioned they hate Michigan, but it's one of them fucking assholes from Ohio <laughs> that roots for Michigan. And you know they don't know a goddamn thing about Michigan history. They just want to be a sack of fucking shit. <laughs> Well, I want them to take a knife, and I want them to cut their dick off or their pussy lips off, because they are fucking worthless. They're just like they're about the same as a fucking backyarder. Cut your fucking nuts off, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> All right, put an explicit tag in front of this one. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it wouldn't be a yeah. Doc Fans on anything without explicitness. That's oh, true. Yeah. That's true. Hey, that's what podcasting's for, so we're allowed to do this kind of stuff, right? Um, well, back to wrestling. <laughs> um, so, so you were watching for for a while. At what point did you decide, hey, I want to get in the ring and I want to do this, or was it kind of the whole time? Well, I've always wanted to be a wrestler. It was mm-hmm. just I always did. I just never had the opportunity. And you believe it or not, uh, a lot of people believe it. But I actually played in a band. Because I didn't start wrestling until I was 26. I'm 34 now. Yeah. And I played music until I was 26 years old when I was 18. And we, like, literally was traveling around the country, you know. So I actually was a singer. We were in Nashville and whatnot. And then I just got, I hated playing music. I only did it for the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't, you know. There's no other way around it. But then I, I really got sick of playing music because it was just, just something I just went into. Mm-hmm. I just did it because I could. And, and then I had the opportunity, you know, met Brian Logan, who was, uh, to train me, he was the uh, guy, he was at OVW. I don't know if you guys remember the Disciples of Sin at OVW, mm-hmm. and, uh, which was uh, Jim Cornette's wife, Stacy Cornette, and she was Sin. He was Damien in that group, the one that had Batista when he was Leviathan. Okay. Mm-hmm. What not. He was the guy that trained me in, uh, out of West Virginia. Um, and I'm telling you, brother, it was like, it was how wrestling, how you should be trained. Because you ever notice in wrestling anymore, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of guys that get trained. And it's just not fully complete. You don't get the shit kicked out of you to where, like, you respect the business even more. Mm. Like, he would he would just physically just fuck us up with Hindu squats, cardio, run the ropes until you'd be fucking puking. You know, to where the point to where now I am very, very, you know, I get very confrontational when business ain't done right or I feel someone's not like respecting the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but he trained me up right and uh, had about, uh, I've had over, I've almost got 600 matches in nine years. Nice. So Nice. Yeah, uh, not too bad considering that, you know, it's not like it was back in the old days. Shit, if it was back in the old days, I'd have fucking 3,000 matches right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone could work. And, it, it's definitely a different world uh, uh, these days in indie wrestling. Um, so, uh, so you've been, uh, how long have you been on, uh, on the indies? Nine years. Nine years now. Um, so you probably mm-hmm. seen, you've probably seen a lot of stuff. Um, you, you talked a little bit about you know business being done right and stuff. Uh, and this is something we want to try to insert in here. You know, you kind of you know help us give us the idea a little earlier. So so uh, you know, we'll get to like you know what's what's the best thing about the indies and what's something that's pissing you off about the indies out there right now that you're seeing. Well, without going into a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, which you know which I don't feel that professional wrestlers need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but stuff that I like about the Indies is, is, is the brotherhood is so big. Mm. that and I mean, brotherhood and sisterhood, of course, all the brothers and sisters in our business, <laughs> you know, of course you can't, we can't leave the ladies out. I'm not going <laughs> to talk about midgets. I'll leave the fuck of midgets out. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have history with midgets. But, like, I could go, you can almost go in, around nine states, and you could go to a place for the first time that you've never worked. And you could show up in a locker room, 
and you might, you know, and it's a pretty good chance you know somebody. Because mm-hmm. you got brothers, you know, and I have friends, which just kind of makes me laugh in all 50 states. Well, I'm not in the Montana. No one lives out there. No one that's fucking dumb. <laughs> but almost all, you know, all the states, you know, maybe some in Canada. I got a lot of friends in Canada. You know, I don't speak Spanish, so I ain't got no friends in Mexico. So um, it's just, that's the best part about it. You have a friend everywhere you go. And when you see each other, you may not see each other two years, but it's just like, you know, you just saw them last week. Mm. But now to get to the thick of it, and you want to get to the bad stuff that I hate about independent pro wrestling, is one, how long we got? <laughs> <laughs> We're we mostly wide day, open on time. This. <laughs> all right. For one, there's a lot of assholes out there working for free. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I'm all for guys going out and working. But then you get guys that, and it's promoters too. Promoters don't want to use, you know, for a promoter to not pay a guy is one thing. But when a wrestler accepts the fact that he's working for free, it is completely bullshit. Like, I wish the boys took care of themselves the way the girls do. Like, girls won't settle for cheat. Right. They really don't. And they take care of each other, and that's fantastic. And then you get promotions that will use some some fucking piece of shit who don't know nothing about wrestling. You know, they'll put him in a ring because they just want to be nice or because he's free. They'll put it, and it just blows my mind when you can, you know, there's so many guys out there that could do this for a living if you didn't have such shitty ass people, you know, letting guys not paying them and working for free. That's mm-hmm. absolutely inexcusable should never, ever work for free Mm -hmm. because it's called pro wrestling. You want to work for free, you know, you probably should go try to try for the Olympics or something. Mm -hmm. You know, two guys, let's just say, let me ask you this. How many wrestling fans are up there in Pittsburgh? How many wrestling fans? I'd say a good bit. They were sold out for Royal Rumble here. We got uh, wrestling companies. Oh, fans, I'm sorry. Um, um, I would say four, including VOW, but they're not really regular. So you got, so you got VOW. Yep, PWX, RWA, PWX, IWC. Right. Those companies, all four, and I'm not trying to say anything different. You should have. They, there should be nobody on each roster that works for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Should not. You know, because. What happens if, let's just say the Beatles were all in their prime and they played in the same city every night of the, every night, or, or like say every Saturday night, the Beatles were playing at this town. Mm-hmm. Would, would they, would you believe that they would lose their, uh, a little bit of their muster, right. a little bit of, of the attraction? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, oh shit, we can just see them next week. Two, when all these different promotions are using the same guys, it's just absolutely killing stuff. Because I don't know what the draw is up there anymore. I ain't worked in Pittsburgh in a while. You know, I don't know what place. What, what is a typical draw? Um, I would say typically, like you know, one you know, around one fifty to two hundred. That shows that I work. All right. May a little higher for I like work, some of the bigger I work, shows. I work for War Wrestling in Lyme, Ohio. Mm-hmm. We draw six hundred people mm-hmm. a show. We don't use it. if we had another Fed. We have another Fed trying to run us to run, and we refuse to use any of their guys. We won't use it because that would that would make that would water down the product. Yeah. I just don't get it. Like, I, was, I remember Huntington, West Virginia, one time had four wrestling feds that ran weekly. Mm. Four. Four. How the fuck are you supposed to make any money if everybody's running the same night? Yeah. <laughs> or, it, you know, and you know there and you know there was guys bouncing because they were all different times. Like, curtain jerking in main event. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I know so, that 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 happens a lot out here because I know well PWX they're running bi-weekly now, um, and even you know I work for IWC and RWA doing video, and I've counted at least four times where I'm overlapping this year. You know, mm-hmm. and they're not too far away. We're talking, you know, you're not uh, familiar with geography, uh, probably around here, but um, it's McKeesport, Elizabeth, and um, uh, West Newton, of course, with RWA. Uh, and those are all a stone's throw from each other. They're all south of Pittsburgh. It's not like, you know, what, it was different when we had Far North Wrestling when they were like, you know, say up in Butler, right? At least like, hey, everybody north of the city can go to this. Everybody in the south city can go down here. VOW is right. way out in the middle of nowhere, like like an, at least an hour's drive away from the city, right? Um, and yeah, and so, you know, sometimes yeah. we'll have all three groups. I think are on the same night. Sometimes there's a little lack of planning if that stuff's happening. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I would tell this to the promoter's face. I really would. I, you know, if someone, if they hear this and they get all butt hurt, you know, I mean, I tell it to the face. And I'm not doing it to be a dickhead. You know, it just if if you really sit down and think about it, you know, I mean, guys getting this funk to where they. You know, I actually make I make really good money wrestling. I actually do a pretty good job mm-hmm. because I spread myself out. I'm, you know, I'm not one for leaving wrestling in town. We call it the forty milers. No one that wants to wrestle forty miles away from their house. Yeah, mm-hmm. that happens a lot in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, mm-hmm. That same shit happens in Dayton. It's the only area in Ohio. And Cleveland kind of gets that way, but no one really gives a shit. You know, but you get to a city like Lima, you know. Like OCW, High Championship Wrestling, it was a Jeff Cannon. All these places drawing huge because they don't use anybody else that runs somewhat close. Mm -hmm. They all have unique rosters that stand out. So that's that's, that's a big thing that just frustrates me. I think there's too many feds. For one, in in the United States that ain't regulated, yeah. Mm-hmm. I too, you know, I think I think we should have a national wrestling license to be able to be a professional wrestler in the United States because it's way too damn easy to be a professional wrestler these days. Yeah, right. There's too many assholes out there that can buy. Can, can go to high spots and buy boots. And I'm not going to tell high spots how to make money because that is what it is. I don't blame them. you got to make money. you got to eat. But it, it's too easy for guys to buy boots. So the way we get it is we license everybody. And let's just say we have a regional you know, guy and, we pay, and the state pays him to license people. So we cut down professional wrestlers. You know, and there's a lot more money to go around, for one. Then you have to force, you know, license, like, wrestling companies. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say, a, like, two-hour drive from each other. You can't run a Fed two hours away from another place. Well, just, you know, whatever. You can work later. That way, it would mean more. Because... It wouldn't be so watered down. You wouldn't, you know, you would have less places to work. There would be more opportunity possibly to go around. Because I see these wrestling feds. Like, I've been on some shows where I show up and I go, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. And you look around, you know, and you usually know when people don't come up and shake your hand. Mm-hmm. When you first get to the place, and that's that's a big thing. It's just a matter of shows respect. When you show up and you got people that you have to go tell them to shake your hand, and the promoter don't care, you know that's a shitty place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but those are a few things that really pissed me off about wrestling. All right. Yeah, I think I think. All right, that was a long rant. <laughs> that's fine. That's <laughs> it's all fine. good. We love it. Um, I think that's I think that's the thing we wanted to like when we started this show that sort of touched on is that, you know, in your wrestling, there's great companies out there and there's professional companies and there's, there's ones that are looking to really do some great stuff. And there's others that, you know, 
they're they're sort of there for whatever reason and and like you said they're you know the level of quality or professionalism or stuff like that differs you know and and that's sort of one of the faults when it comes to independent wrestling yeah Okay. Too, too many people just not working together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, I know one thing I did want to mention with you that I was actually interested about, and I know Sorg was talking earlier, like comparing you. Um, one of the person he mentioned was Tracy Smothers. Uh, yeah. I know for a little company in Cleveland called AIW, you actually got to wrestle Tracy and then later on uh, eventually team with him. Uh, yeah. What What was it like working with Tracy and uh, and – uh, uh, what was that whole experience like? <laughs> oh, geez, man. Uh, working with Tracy Smothers, because you be honest with you, I, I look up to Tracy. Mm. Um, it's hard not to look up to a man like Tracy because the guy's been everywhere in the wrestling business for one. And, but then when you watch him wrestle, and I don't care, but you know, there's people out there, man, how he does things nowadays. The dude is a great independent wrestler now. Mm-hmm. Like, he went to being, like, I remember back in the day watching him on on, a, on Smoky Mountain and some of the stuff he he could, I knew he could go. <laughs> and now the man's like 50 years old, and we know we know Tracy can't go out there and do the stuff that people, a lot of the fans are expecting. Mm-hmm. And he's found a way to make himself employable. Mm-hmm. Right. In a sense. So getting wrestling is a night off. <laughs> and then get to team up with him was even more fun because I, I tell you I, I couldn't stop laughing the whole time I was I had tears in my eyes the <laughs> entire time laughing he was he's about to be one of the funniest guys you know we we cut promos together and he had me like legit legit crying and I'm usually very straight face I don't break face you know during promos but he no he, he's the only guy that can get me to crack <laughs> that's awesome so it is an absolute pleasure. Awesome. Uh, so you got a uh, you got a couple shows I know upcoming uh, stuff uh, to uh, mention. Uh, Remix Pro, I know you're involved I know in you're that. You're involved in that. Uh, well, what's sort of uh, going on uh, for you in uh, in uh, Remix Pro? Well, you know, I got a uh, we got a, a benefit show. Uh, I don't know if you guys you probably guys know who uh, Zach Benson is. Mm, yeah, I've I heard oh, yeah. his name uh, uh, thrown around a bit. I think uh, he, he's one of those. Is he the guy that does like headstands and stuff when he comes out? Like, I think I've seen him in RWA. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He works with RWA, and I think he does a couple other places. Yeah. Well, Zach, uh, Zach legit, he's, he's one of my neighbors, actually, believe it or not. And uh, he uh, had a brain tumor, oh. a benign brain tumor in his head, and they had to cut it out. Um, it was a little bit bigger than a golf ball, and they go behind his ear and cut it off, cut it out. Um, and we're doing this show on February 8th in Marietta, Ohio, at the Ewing School to raise money to help Zach with a lot of the costs that, that a brain surgery. You can imagine how much it costs for the brain surgery. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not a cheap thing. Mm-hmm. So we're putting on that show. We're trying to raise all the proceeds. Every single bit of the proceeds goes to that. For one, awesome. but on the other hand, if you want to come to the show, you're going to see some great pro wrestling. You're going to get to see Jock Samson fuck somebody up <laughs> in a Texas bull rope match. What they like to call it Texas, and it pisses me off because I'm I'm an Appalachian, so I like to call it an Appalachian bull rope match. <laughs> but uh, the powers that be like to put Texas on there. You know, but we got well, we got cows and stuff and bulls and then Appalachia. We got farmers up here. As the, as the resident Texan, I'll be more than happy to to give you that to uh, to Appalachia. It, yeah, yeah, and I carry I carry a cowbell around with me everywhere I go, and I named it after the great late great Conway Twitty. I call it Conway, <laughs> and I like to take Conway at times and uh, pass people's heads in with him. Awesome. <laughs> So that's going to be a real good show, though. I, off the top of my head, I can't really think of any other cards because I, I really don't. You know, I, I you know, it's hard enough keeping up with my own shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah. 
I never seen his prophets on the show, and mm. that dude you can't you cannot miss. Yeah, it looks like uh, also a friend of the show, Gory, will be there. Uh, Shark Boy of TNA fame will be there. Uh, another yeah. name, I, another name I recognize. I recently saw in Texas, uh, Jason Kincaid from the, he works for a lot of the NWA promotions. He's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of great people on the show. So, and yep. uh, like you said, for a really great cause. So, I encourage anyone to go out to that. It's in Marietta, Ohio. Um, uh, and you want more information? Information? I believe you can find Remix Pro Wrestling on Facebook and uh, go check them out. And I do believe our, uh, Remix does do DVDs and everything. I believe I think Joe Dabrowski actually does the commentary for them, if I recall. Um, and I've seen a little bit of Remix Pro, and it's a, it's a really good a really good show uh, from the stuff I've seen from it. So and I say just look at the list of names on there. It's a lot of guys that we talk about uh, here up here in Pittsburgh, and you know um, and stuff like that. So. Awesome, awesome, hey, uh, Jock. Before before we let you go, I want to talk about one thing I found because this I was I saw this picture several months ago, apparently leading up to the show, um, and and I, I I remembered it and I remember you were a part of this picture, and I I, I just had to find it, um, so I, I found it, it, it. Am I getting the name right? Um, the, the the website is Old Wrestling with an E on the old, so it's Old A Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, it, it is extravaganza, extravaganza um, and, and you're involved with it. I love you. You go check out the videos. Everything's in black and white. I guess you can call it old timey wrestling. Um, and there's a great collection of names on this too. Uh, I think Chuck Taylor is the see mm-hmm. Chuck Taylor's part of the faction you're, you're involved in here. He, he, and we are the moonshine men of Appalachia. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's yeah, because he is the Kentucky gentleman. So you guys would uh, 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 fit in pretty well together, I guess. We get along pretty good. We we were just hammered the whole time, just drunk. <laughs> but it was. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, man. That was a. Uh, I. Be- it was an absolute the funnest wrestling show I have ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. I see this guy. Uh, I mean, we're we're playing some video here. This like did this guy drive in in an old time car. He did. <laughs> uh, you got to watch the rest of the film, though, because this dude, that dude was actually pretty funny how, how he, he shook some little kid for some money. Yeah, 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 because <laughs> like, the video like ends with him like holding a kid upside down from the audience, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was absolutely an absolute fun, fun, great time. It was an absolute blast. Awesome. And I, that was one of the few shows that I was like the most fun. Like, I believe you can go to Smart Mark Video and you can get that. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you can get the footage for that. It was it was it was a damn good time. Yeah, I love um, uh, what like I know we've we've talked about before. Uh, you know, I, I love this concept. We we've, we've talked before about um, I don't know if you've heard of Squared Circle Review, which is kind of a carnival you know interesting like different kind of characters so like like zach allen plays pogo the wonder boy in it you know one guy plays like a uh a, a bro bot from the future and then in you know they have these time warp match where he's fighting cowboys and somebody from egypt you know uh the, 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 are you into those kind of interesting extra concept kind of pro wrestling shows never heard of that one before it's up in the Detroit um, area yeah i like the con- i like the, i like the concept because i actually you know, uh, being the WWE uh, kid, you know, you can't help not to like it because, the, you know, shit, you had a spaceman at one time in WWE, you know? <laughs> People were trying to pop believe that, you know, a spaceman was legit like, you know, catch as catch can wrestler. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, hell yeah, man. And and the most importantly, it's different. But, I, I you know, as long as the characters are something like the person, Mm. Instead of like a tree mm. or something, <laughs> let me plant a tree. Who wants to see a fucking tree fight? Actually, isn't there isn't there a tree? Isn't there like the proud oak or something, Eamon, that you've watched wrestle? Yeah, the, the uh, Chikara and the wrestling is producing, are producing some 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 interesting <laughs> anthropomorphic guys. <laughs> you saw Manny Fernandez want to kill. I, I'm not going to go too far. Manny Fernandez. Was, uh, was on a show and he he wasn't real happy about some of that stuff, but I'll leave that to that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't care for the gimmicks. I was I was actually scared for people, mm. and I had to wrestling that night, so I was more scared for me just <laughs> being there. But he was a gentleman to me. But yeah, so we'll just leave it. <laughs> yeah, he was ready to fight. He was ready to fight. 
<laughs> and then I told this story to somebody, and someone, and this, this tells you where wrestling was going. They look at me and said, who's, who's Manny Fernandez? And I wanted to fucking stab him. <laughs> you uh, know, no history. No history. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, Jock, it's been a great conversation. I, I love getting your perspective on what's going on in indie wrestling and everything. Uh, is there anything uh, you want to say uh, going out here? We won't, you know, I, I know you got to get to some things. Uh, we won't have you stick around for the conversation here, but anything else you want to go out on? Well, I got a, uh, I'll be in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky for Real Wildcat Championship Wrestling this Saturday. And the following Saturday, I am going to be in Mansfield, Ohio. And it's uh, for ASWA. I don't know if you guys know Nightmare Jimmy Lee. Okay. Um, he he is the trainer of one of the next uh, Nexus guys or whatever they call them guys in the next neck whatever. <laughs> and Jake, I, I don't remember. He I can't remember the fuck guy's name now. It was Jake South was his mm-hmm. real name? Yeah. But he was down in Nexus. I don't remember shit. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know how much wrestling I watched today. I want shit. You know, because I'm a pro wrestler. I don't want to watch other guys wrestle. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm too busy watching, you know, the Reds or something. You know, during, <laughs> so, but uh, I'll be wrestling for ASWA, real good place. They draw about three to four, 300 to 400 people mm-hmm. in Ohio. And that's like a really old school wrestling crowd. I will be in a lumberjack strap match against... A guy who used he was one of the executioners mm. for in WWE. Nice. I don't know if you remember them. Yeah. His name was Barry Hardy. He was one of the he was one of their uh, guys that uh, would come in and he tried really hard. He just kept getting his ass kicked. <laughs> um, I'm wrestling him in that match, and then the following week we got a Zach show, and I do believe we have uh, the second Ohio Championship Wrestling Show of the Year. February 22nd uh, in Zanesville, Ohio, which actually anybody from Pittsburgh or whatnot, that's actually straight shot. My three hours, but it'd be that OCW runs a really good wrestling show. I'll be wrestling dark star, Matt Taylor, but I'm going to tell you if anyone out there in, in the wrestling world, they need to check out Ohio wrestling. Because I'm going to tell you, there are some really great wrestling companies in the state of Ohio. There's a lot of great professional wrestlers. You know, a lot of guys getting called up to WWE. Mm. You guys need to get to Ohio. Ohio is mm. getting shit on. You know, when it comes, they don't get enough respect for, for being a great wrestling state. Mm. Yeah, I know. And, I am, and maybe because I'm like pro, I'm like one of the biggest Ohio guys in the history of mankind. You know, but... <laughs> It is absolutely one of the greatest states for wrestling going right now because you got Rockstar Pro Wrestling in Dayton, which is Cody Hawk. You got Lima War Wrestling in Lima, OCW in uh, Coshocton, Ohio, and then you got AIWF in Cleveland and, uh, and ASWA in Mansfield. Man, that, that's those are some big drawing wrestling feds, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're nice to spread out too, from the sounds of it. Yes, and that's the reason why. And there's a couple of shitty places, little outlaw places in between. Mm-hmm. And, and and the whole thing is, these places, if you work for them little outlaw shitheads, you're 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 not going to get used because, you know, you, they want you to be bigger than life. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to work for no outlaw fed. I want to work for a place that's going to draw three to four hundred, and I usually do. And I, you know, call me arrogant, call me what you will, but I actually like to get. I actually like money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, simple. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people. Uh, I, I think uh, I think I've heard this from a friend of mine. This is a wrestling business, right? right. And and people kind of forget the business part of it. There's there's too many guys treating wrestling like a hobby. Yeah. If if you want a hobby, go take up fucking backgammon. <laughs> or trains, you know, and get the fuck out of my business because this ain't a fucking hobby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. When you get money for something, you know, you are a professional. Hookers get paid, for God's sakes, and they call them professionals. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm sure, you know, a, a bitch would get slapped, a hooker would get slapped around if she didn't get paid. 
Mm-hmm. I wish we, you know, I wish we had like wrestling pimps who would slap some of these shitheads around that they if they accepted like a, you know, no money for a booking. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that just blows my mind, man. Uh, you know, I could go on. We'd be here till three in the fucking morning <laughs> with all my my rants and whatnot. But it's pro wrestling. Get out of your house. Drive more than tw- twenty minutes to go somewhere. You know because. It'll be worth it. And check Ohio Wrestling. That's where I'm going to leave it at. Exactly. But if anybody wants, I actually have a tweeter <laughs> at uh, jocksamson.com slash Twitter, or however the hell they do that. Yeah, yeah backwards. But <laughs> at Jock Samson, they'll figure it out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. And then Facebook, and just got Jock Samson at the end of it, right? At the end of it? Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> And then you don't. There's no, there is no P in Samson. It's S A M S O N. Yeah, I All screwed that. Up. I screwed that up one time on a DVD. I, I, I apologize profusely for that one. <laughs> I, mean, I, I cracked the fuck down on that shit. Yeah, he did. Oh, he yelled at me for <laughs> right from a I mean, What's that? I want to make sure I'm going to see Chachi in the nuts again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, if you're on DBI three, I might be dragging them uh, along with me. I. More than likely, we'll be on BBI three. Excellent, excellent. I, I enjoyed your uh, attempts. Attempt? I say plural at the Battle Royal last year. I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. I was in there one time. Um, of course, of course, of course. I have no idea who was in that Winnie the Pooh mask. Um, but uh, that was Honky the Pooh. Honky the Pooh. I did not catch it was Honky the Pooh. That was amazing. It was Honky the Pooh. Great wrestler from from the Netherlands. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Maybe you guys could start a faction together. They have great. They have good physiques. They have very similar physiques to me, but it wasn't me. So yeah, just leave yeah. it at that. Same styles. I mean, you guys work great. You know, awesome together. So thanks, Jock Samson. It's, it's been a pleasure talking with you again. Anytime, we'll have you back on the show here to talk uh, some more. Um, so check them uh-huh. out. Jock Samson again on Twitter, on Facebook, and on your coming to your town. Here in the Midwest. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, boy. See ya. <laughs> Later. <laughs> All right, Eamon. Uh, another great conversation with Jock Sanson. It was great having him on the show again. Absolutely. So, um, so with that, I want to, well, we want to get in a little bit of conversation. I think first we wanted to talk about our YouTube challenge that we're trying to get kicked off here on the show. Um, yes. Explain to us what you had uh, for last week. Well, for the last week, uh, I started a little spinoff from what we're doing at Insert Coin to Begin, uh, which they do their challenge every week uh, to challenge you to uh, play some video games. Uh, And I challenge people to support some wrestling and support some independent wrestling, support some independent wrestlers, and find some new stuff. Uh, So this past week's uh, first ever indie wrestling challenge, maybe we'll change the name, maybe we won't. (laughs) It feels like WWE wrestling challenge to me, you know? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, this this past week's challenge was uh, Japanese Joshi competitor Kana. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Joshi competitor, she's worked for Shimmer, a couple of different American companies. Uh, so I included her in there. Uh, so, Sorg, uh, I know you checked out some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, were, what were your thoughts? I wanted to – I definitely wanted to know your thoughts, Sorg, since uh-huh. I want I, – I, every, every person I know that doesn't know about Japanese wrestling, I want to get them into it. <laughs> and you just sold me on Japanese wrestling. I mean, I, I know I, there's awesome stuff, and I think I mentioned last, last week my Japanese wrestling experience is, you know, whatever comes into TNA for the World Cup. Up and um, yeah. strangle mania. Um, so there's that. Um, <laughs> but no, I, well, one thing I get past because most of these matches are Japanese. There is no English in these. Um, yeah. So, so that's one thing to get by right away, right? Just you're not going to have any commentary. But I'm you, you, you put together an awesome selection here because the names in this, like right off the the first thing on the list is uh, uh, Kana versus Funaki. Yes, the right. indeed guy from this WWE. Is, most of these are uh, most of these uh, were from uh, Tajiri's uh, Yoshio Tajiri's promotion, WWE's Tajiri uh, Smash Wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, which is now defunct uh, and now became WNC Wrestling New Classic. Um, so he mixed it with a lot of like top Japanese talents with some guys like Funaki. I know he brought in guys like Mikey Whipwreck, Tommy Dreamer, sort of guys that he knew 
sort of through the wrestling industry uh, to mix it up with uh, his talent. So, mm-hmm. and, and there's ones in, in this playlist with with uh, him, her. I think teaming with Tajiri, wasn't it? Um, yes. Serena Deeb from WWE. You may not remember her from the uh, Straight Edge, Straight Edge Society mm-hmm. uh, with CM Punk. Um, in really really good matches. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's and and it's interesting because I, I know. It's a different thing. When we look at smaller venue kind of things, we think indie wrestling, we think, you know, versus WWE. Right. But this is how they run over there, is, is venues like this. You know, whether these be DVD or on TV or something, like, I think these these get around pretty good. Right. Um, I loved her style. It was It's very hard-hitting. I, I'm not used to seeing Serena with hair. You know, I know I don't catch <laughs> enough of her on the indies to get used to it. Um, but, uh, no, it, it, if, if you are sick of women's wrestling on your – WWE TV being so horrible. Um, mm-hmm. This is the kind of stuff you need to be start you need to start looking up and see what women's wrestling can be when like girls that know what the hell they're doing in there and aren't some like you know models that kind of learned wrestling from Fit Finley years ago um, right. and and what they can do. And I and I think the key is I think Kana and one thing maybe I wanted to illustrate but necessarily couldn't because there's not like a footage i guess i could you know say but very beautiful very refined um, oh, yeah and and revered almost for almost her beauty as well in japan i know japan also it, i mean japan they're into that hard-hitting style but they're not afraid to also like you know these women are women and they're you know beautiful women but they're also competitors and they're and they you know are in a business to you know compete just as much as any male wrestler is um and like i said sort like sort mentioned like it's uh, difference, much difference from anything I think you'll see in America. Uh, this is definitely the extreme. This is the counter to everything that you know a lot of people are used to for women's wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's different, and it like you sort of said, it's very hard hitting, um, very very um, competitive based. Um, I'm I'm always very impressed whenever, especially a match you share as Japanese wrestling, that. You know, uh, you know, a lot of time pro wrestling pretends to be a real fight, you know, or an athletic contest or something like mm-hmm. these little more so like this. These aren't flippy, ridiculous X division matches or anything like that. They, they really do like feel like good athletic contests and 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 they're, mm-hmm. they're a lot of fun to watch. And even though you have no idea what the hell anybody's saying, you know, the story's told in the ring. You know. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. Japan is also big on, you know, they're big on the hard hitting stuff, and they're big on, you know, that competitive nature that um, that they have. But they're also not afraid to tell stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a match in there between Kana and a uh, another Japanese wrestler, uh, Joshi wrestler named Shuri, which was the big climax to like the final uh, Smash Wrestling show. Mm-hmm. And it was a feud that was built through the entirety of the company of the promotion. Uh, and it's and it's sort of longer for me to go into, but Suri was sort of supposed to be like the poster child of the company to begin with, and Kana was sort of gaining recognition all across Japan and was being brought in, and uh, sort of gr- they sort of grew together in a sense. Um, and this the match that Sorg's showing is, bit, is basically the culmination of all of that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, believe, I believe this one, if, if I recall, this one had a lot, a lot of ceremony at the beginning of it too. Right, they because they, they take it very seriously and they mm-hmm. and they make it feel big and 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 important. Awesome. So awesome. So, what do you have uh, lined up for us uh, uh, for this week's challenge? For this week's challenge, uh, I went back to America, back to a talent that uh, you can definitely support, uh, who's making his rounds. I think uh, all throughout America, who I encourage you to support because this guy, in my opinion, deserves to be the next big thing in independent wrestling. Uh, It's been talked about a lot, but I think he deserves to be wrestling in Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Guerrilla and all these promotions, not just because I've seen him, but because he really is that talented. Uh, And that is a man named Davey Vega. Uh, You may know Davey Vega if uh, you are from the Midwest area, specifically St. Louis. Uh, He is a part of a stable that you may know called the Submission Squad, uh, who uh, has been sort of... Uh, went into wrestling sort of revered, but uh, if you've uh, seen the Submission Squad from like 08, 09, and how they've grown now into 2014, you would not know the difference. Or, you, or I should say, there's a huge difference, excuse me. Um, there, Davey Vega is, quite frankly, one of the uh, well, most well-rounded competitors 
uh, I've found through independent wrestling. I know him uh, from going to Anarchy Championship wrestling shows uh, because him, as well as a bunch of other St. Louis guys, make the drive down, which in case you don't know, it's a 14-hour drive from St. Louis to Texas, oh, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and they've been doing it for like four or five years now. You know, and it's funny because you always talk about St. Louis like so synonymously with the stuff that you've worked in Texas. I started mm-hmm. thinking, I haven't looked at the map, but I'm just like, is St. Louis a lot closer than I think it is? No, I, it's a long drive. But no, it's... you guys, well, I, I don't drive. I have never driven 14 hours for wrestling. The longest I have gone for wrestling is to New York City, which mm-hmm. is eight hours. Right. Maybe. Yeah, right. and Vega has done. I mean, Vega's done that with Anarchy Championship Wrestling. He now does that when he work. He's been mm-hmm. working for Inspire a couple times now. Um, yeah, and it's fourteen hours up, and they usually wrestle, and maybe yeah. they stay for like a little bit, and then it's fourteen hours That's back. That's awesome. Like it's it, they're very dedicated, and and he's very much honed his craft and gotten better. Um, there's a lot of great matches on this playlist that uh, you can get at the, our Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube page. Uh, sort of showing a match from St. Louis Anarchy where he wrestled Kyle O'Reilly, Ring of Honor star, uh, Ring of Honor tag team champion. Uh, there's one in Anarchy Championship Wrestling where he's wrestling Jerry Lynn. Uh, there's a couple uh, from Anarchy where he's wrestling a lot of the St. Louis talent that uh, he's grown with. Um, including there's also a match uh, from the first ever Inspire Pro show uh, when he faced uh, Chuck Taylor and ACH in a three-way match, which is super fun. Um, there's a lot of good stuff, and I I can't say it enough how much I love Davey Vega and how much I think he needs to be the next guy that everyone knows about. Um, and so I encourage you, you can either – one, you can watch our playlist that's on Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, you can basically look at anything, honestly. The, you're not limited to the playlist. If you see anything involving Davey Vega, watch it. Uh, tell us what you think, both uh, by email at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com or by tweeting at us. Uh, you can just tweet your thoughts or Facebook us uh, on our Facebook group, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. And if you want to go the extra mile, like I mentioned before, find a DVD that has Davey Vega and buy it and watch it or video on demand, you know, or a MP4. Um, Cause there's a lot, uh, like I say, he's working for St. Louis for St. Louis anarchy, anarchy championship wrestling. He's worked for a bunch of companies. So there's a lot that I think you can find out there for Davey Vega mm-hmm. um, in against a lot of guys. He's wrestled guys like Davey Richards. Um, he's, I know he's re- uh, upcoming for uh, a show. Maybe we may be talking about soon. Uh, St. Louis anarchy's double shot. Uh, him and Matt Fitch are going to be wrestling the young bucks. Um, it, this, he's breaking out and you should definitely watch him. Uh, but I want to know what you have to say. Uh, and what you think about Davey, v- Davey Vega, what you like, what you don't like. So either tweet that to us at Mayhem Show on our Facebook group, Wrestling Mayhem Show, or Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com and join in on the challenge, join in on the discussion, and support independent wrestling. Awesome. Um, so let's get into our calendar uh, a bit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, let me talk about it. I, and I think for the purpose of this show, I think we can, for the most part, consider Ring of Honor independent. I would still, yeah. I mean, it's they're on TV. They're on national. I mean, they're national-ish, you know. But until mm-hmm. they're on something where they're on a night, a week in every town, I, I don't think I'm going to consider them anything but independent. They're they're doing very well for an independent. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they have a lot of history. They're kind of the top of the independents, I guess you could call it, right? I would say I would still say so. Um, but they are coming to Pittsburgh, of course. Royal Rumble is coming this weekend. Uh, WWE. Uh, so so there's that. Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of times you kind of see a ring of honor and some other feds piggybacking on it. And, uh, it's, that is the case here for ring of honor. Um, interesting. They usually do, they usually do, uh, Ross Raver ice gardens, which we talked with, with Jock about how, uh, all the wrestling's in the South Hills. This is, it was a good, almost an hour drive, if not probably about an hour drive from Pittsburgh to go see Ring of Honor, uh, down there. Uh, and I think it was like the Bell Vernon area here, here in, uh, around Pittsburgh. Um, so it's a pretty good drive. I noticed that they're having this show and I can't remember the last time I don't, I don't think you would ever say that wrestling has happened in downtown Pittsburgh. Because I know we've talked about this a lot. And one of the things I know you've always known is that there's never wrestling like actually in the city. Yes. At which there is, but that's a whole other discussion um, with the DJ lunchbox, but there uh, that's a whole other discussion. Maybe we'll mm-hmm. have him on for uh, sometime in the future. Um, but so they're actually going to have it 
at the David Lawrence Convention Center, downtown Pittsburgh. Now, granted, it's not like they're taking up the entire convention center. I'm sure they have a section of it because I believe World of Wheels is happening at the same time uh, mm. <laughs> during the day, which they're having. Actually, you know, I think Seamus and Jericho, uh, Chris Jericho, are going to be there uh, as well. Uh, it, it, this is one of um, it's going to be wrestling's finest. They're calling it. Uh, we have uh, uh, Matt Hardy and Adam Cole, the Briscoes, Mike Elegant and Chris Hero teaming up. Uh, of course, Maria, Kevin Steen, Paul London, um, and uh, they got a pretty. Good lineup here, uh, and I always love these. I, I enjoyed the TV and tapings, of course, but I love the shows. The last one they had here in Pittsburgh was just one of these, like straight the DVD kind of shows, and that's where mm -hmm. they're just as good as seeing a pay per view. You know, uh, that's one thing Ring of Honor is really good about. Um, they got a three way tag match between uh, the guys I just mentioned, uh, Cole and Hardy, Hero and Elgin, uh, and the Briscoes. Um, they're also going to have uh, for a chance at the ROH World Championship. Uh, title uh, February 8th in San Antonio in your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? They're always here and then like your, your place next. It's, it's, it's like I, I feel this is our I feel this is our doing. Sorry. This it, is we our... did this. We did this. You'll also get you'll also <laughs> we probably created get Paul London change. There. Yeah, we made this happen. Uh, but Paul London, who's from your neck of the woods against Roderick mm -hmm. Strong there. Um, uh, uh, I would love three -way... to see an Adam Cole Paul London match. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, three way match for the, uh, the World TV Champion. Uh, we got uh, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, which have you watched him? He's a, he's a, he's been growing. He's been getting a lot of more. I know he's getting a lot more bookings also out of uh, uh, mm -hmm. Ring of Honor. He's wrestled PWG. He's wrestled Beyond Wrestling. Uh, I've, I've, so I'm sorry to see a bit more of him than I've usually been able to see. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, yeah. I mean, Ring of Honor really introduced me to to definitely him. And I was like, well, what's the deal with this guy? Like, it took me a bit to get. I'm not a regular watcher of the show, but I will go mm -hmm. to any live show that comes to town. Jay Lethal, Matt Tavern also in that match. Kevin Steen takes on uh, Kyle O'Reilly. I know he's been having a thing with um, um, ah, why can't I remember his name? The guy <laughs> from Five Dollar Wrestling, uh, Freight Train. Not freight train. It's Ring of Honor. Are you kidding me? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, we had the wrong people on the show for this one. Yeah. Um, and of course, Jimmy Jacobs, BG Whitner against ACH and Tadarius Thomas. Did they really put those two together? They did. Because they did put them together. The <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, they're athletic. And, like, 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 they're how athletic obvious of another. A, how <laughs> obvious of a tag team can you do? But they are really good flippy guys. So. Sure, why not? I'm sure it'd be yeah. amazing, uh, especially with Whitmer and Jacobs in there. I can't believe Whitmer's wrestling. Yeah, that, that's kind of surprising to Did me. Did he come back like super quick? Yeah. Um, hopefully, he's okay. <laughs> hopefully, BJ Whitmer's good. I'm sure in a long run he won't be. He's another Kurt Angle case, probably. Um, yeah, hopefully so, not. So great show. I, I you know, whatever you think, you know, Ring of Honor is, you know getting bigger more people are exposed to it i'm surprised all the time by normal people i run into who talk who run into me and, and tell me uh, uh hey i've been watching ring of honor and not wwe you know like that mm. is happening for real you know and the last time i took those guys to a show and they just like screamed their heads off until they couldn't anymore and it was it was tremendous so what do you got going on there Eamon? you got anything uh, cut, cut your eye there's an event that uh, I possibly will be attending, actually, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, this weekend, uh, for NWA Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're in Cypress, Texas, uh, Saturday, January 25th. The uh, big profile match on that show is for the NWA World Women's Championship. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, 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 I, I appreciate the NWA putting sort of a women's ch uh, championship on sort of the higher profile on this show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Casey Carlisle defending against Barbie Hayden, who is a great talent from the Texas area, uh, starting to expand a bit more. So, and she's very talented. So I, I'd be excited to see that. Uh, a lot of guys I know, a lot of guys I've worked with, um, will be at that show. Uh, it's in Cypress, Texas, Saturday, January 25th at the VFW, uh, post 8905. Uh, you can get your tickets at nwahouston.com. Uh, should be a really fun show. Uh, I'm I'm uh, been to a couple NWA Houston shows. I've been to their uh, super shows that they had most recently. The one that they had in October with uh, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, mm -hmm. which was super fun. And, uh, I see and they do, Liger was there. They do have that show on DVD. They do. They have the, that on DVD. They also have their Parade of Champions show from April 
uh, which was another one of their super shows that they had on DVD. Awesome. Um, so, so yeah, go check them out there. Uh, I like that they're producing stuff. I, I, I think more companies should do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. And, uh, go support NWA Houston. All the NWA affiliates uh, are doing really cool stuff. So I encourage you to definitely go check that out if you're in Houston. Um, also, another company that I wanted to bring up that's having a show this weekend, if you're in the Chicago area, uh, AAW, uh, which uh, is, in my opinion, I think a very high-profile uh, wrestling company uh, in Chicago, in the Midwest, uh, that's been doing great stuff. I've been doing good, great stuff for a long time now. Um, they're in that top echelon, and if, I, if there's a company... I'm in the list of companies I encourage people to check out, I would definitely include AAW in there. Uh, a lot of great talent on this show. Uh, Michael Elgin and Ethan Page defend the championship, their tag team championships against Ricochet and Uha Nation, uh, which are two of the – I mean that, that match alone I think is going to be absolutely killer. You have Elgin – from Ring of Honor, you've got Ethan Page who's coming up, Ricochet and Uha, who have been killing it in Japan for Dragon Gate USA, or for Dragon Gate, I should say. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Davey Richards, uh, Louis Linden, uh, Marion Fontaine, who I know uh, Sorg, I believe, has uh, seen a couple times before. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, ACA, and even not list, like, even with not the matches announced so far, like ACH, Jimmy Jacobs, Eddie Kingston, Colt Cabana. Um, there's a good list of talent on here. Yeah. Um, if you want to go check that out, that's the, uh, at the Berwyn Eagles club in Berwyn, Illinois, this Friday, January 24th for the chaos theory. Uh, you can go get tickets at AA wrestling.com. Also search, um, for a bunch of the stuff that they have on smart mark video and SMVOD.com. I have a lot of, mm. I have a couple of their events and they, they produce some really good stuff. Nice. So, nice. um, uh, uh, and great quality of show. So I gotta, go check them out. I love a place that has really good graphic design. You know, that mm-hmm. really, like, I, who knows what this show ends up, you know, looking like or anything. You know, of course, you've watched it. It actually looks very like, good. Their production is very... really good. Like, when they put all in on production, I, I, I mean, I, of course, you know, that's the sign I work on, you know, and I do my best. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but, you know, anything to make it look as, as good as possible, you know. Uh, and, and, and I think posters like this really kind of say, oh, hey, what is this? You know, because honestly, you see posters like this or even you see a poster for, like, Pro Wrestling Syndicate. Mm-hmm. Um they look more interesting to me sometimes in the WWE pay-per-view ones. Yeah. Um, I think that it's eye catching. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they need to, um, the prime wrestling ones, um, you know, the guys, the guys working on the prime wrestling ones were just tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some great stuff when like Jimmy Jacobs was, um, I think it was feuding with Johnny Gargano and uh, they were doing some kind of mind game thing and the stuff they came up with was just like stuff from phrases from his promo and stuff. It was just amazing. I, I don't mm-hmm. just look up. I'm sure on probably wrestling's website. You can probably find some of those older ones for those shows. Uh, really, really good stuff. So yeah, post posters are definitely one, an underlying art. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, the ones I think that, uh, we put out for Inspire Pro, thanks to our good friend Dustin Nance oh, Graphics. Yeah. Still- um, I love those. Dustin, uh, if you're listening, you are killer. Yeah, I, it, it, I'm always really impressed with how Inspire looks. Like, even though you guys were like, what, four shows in, it looks like you've been doing it forever. Um, when you, they, As far as for, first impressions means so much. It does, um, and right, especially in this stuff. industry. Right? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, mean I, I really, you know, if you're somebody who's doing a website um, for an indie, look at other sites. Mm-hmm. You know, look at does the what? How does my would I go to this my promotion site and think I want to go to that show, or will I go to X promotion site and decide to go with that? Hey, regional, look regionally too, yeah, and see how they are as well. Um, I know here one person does like two of the three or four sites, you know, you know, and they all look once he does look amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like a next level thing. And that gives you, I think a, a leg up, you know, uh, as far as that goes. So absolutely. Awesome. You know, I just sitting here thinking, uh, maybe this is some kind of challenge we can promote as well. Uh, and I'm kind of considering it myself. Uh, we talk about, Hey, go check out YouTube, go check out your local indie promotion. I kind of want to, I don't know if I want to dedicate it to this just yet, but I kind of want a self challenge. I want other people to try this too, to just, you know, plunk down 10 bucks and get a smart mark video on demand or something. Try yeah. something new. 
You know, if it's Absolutely. something we're talking about or something. And if you do try something new, drop us a line. Let us know mm-hmm. at the email address, at the at, at the Twitter or something like that. Uh, we, I, I think eventually, like, as more people will get on the show and stuff, um, we want to get some more opinions. Maybe we'll bring some other people have opinions of feds we haven't checked out and stuff like that. And, and why I want to find out why other people... You know, they're fans like indie wrestling, too. Right. Kind of the stuff that they're into. Um, so, me, personally, right. I'm fun. I'm trying to still trying to fill that hole left by Chikara. Yeah. I so, think a lot of people are. I really am. There's nothing else that, that has that, like, wow factor like that. Although, I'm looking at the Square Circle Review. I'm looking at this old-time wrestling, and it's it's, it's close. But there's it's, new ones popping up. There's there's a lot that I'm becoming really invested in and, and mm-hmm. really... Mm-hmm thinking like this could be something special um uh, there's there's tons there's tons awesome. out there um so yeah i i yeah i like that challenge actually go to smart mark video go even if it's not a dvd if you don't like the uh, <laughs> physical dvd stuff you can get like an eight dollar mp3 or, or excuse MP4, me MP4. Yeah, yeah and sometimes they have um, discounts and stuff we have stuff over at sorry Tron media but don't you don't have to buy ours of course i mean you know, check out <laughs> anything really I, we, we're not just saying buy our shit. there's also there's <laughs> also mean, free stuff on youtube go to inspire pro video <laughs> <YouTube.com>. <laughs> while we're at it right um yeah and of course thanks a lot jock samson at jock samson on twitter check him out on facebook as well he's a really fun guy go check out his matches really entertaining uh, it's been a blast uh seeing him on some of the matches uh some of the shows i've had I had the opportunity to work um both here in pennsylvania and in, in ohio as well uh so definitely go check him out who we got next week we got next week i actually just confirmed it not too long ago uh <laughs> next week uh someone who's returning who uh was on our wrestling mayhem show uh to talk uh about uh his wrestling scene uh and also for a, a big upcoming event for uh the company that he's the champion of st louis anarchy we will have gary J. awesome um so and he's always a character so that should be a very was, fun uh night he was uh, a blast. yeah yeah, so, and also if you have questions for Gary, uh, go submit them either uh, at uh, Mayhem Show on Twitter or goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com with a subject line indie so we can sort through all those uh, bad boys. Yeah, go check it out. Of course, we do the show here at 11 p.m. Eastern Time uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And since we're coming from Texas being represented, that's 10 o'clock. Yeah, standard time. Give us, give us, as we well, need that, we need that help. We are, we are. What we need to help? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, you're used to nobody giving a crap about your time zone, right? I mean that that that's a thing, right? I mean, yeah, it has to be a little know. bit of a you know. I I can't imagine that. <laughs> um, I feel bad for West Coasters. Oh my God, sorry, Alex Cars. Uh, so we'll see you guys next week talking indies, enjoying it. What the hell kind of ending is that? <laughs> I like go watch indie wrestling. <laughs> go watch indie wrestling. What's up on there? Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pain. Sick, 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 you're not.